All right, welcome back to another adventure, you guys. We're out in beautiful North Idaho, where the snow is. <laughs> it's kind of warm today, though. It's, we're hitting, uh, I think we're upwards of 40 degrees today. So we do have a bit of snow that's melting, but that's okay. We're gonna be hiking into the woods. I've brought the uh, sled here, the polk sled, so we can get ourselves out there and find ourselves a nice little campsite. Brought the uh, hot tent and the stove. We're gonna be set. I was checking out Google Earth like I always do, and I found this really neat little spot over here. It's about a mile into the woods, and it's right next to a creek. So hopefully, hopefully we can make it out there. All right, let's get everything packed up, and we'll hit the trail. All right, we got our EcoFlow Glacier. We're gonna grab our food out of that. It's been keeping things nice and cool in there. <laughs> We're gonna be making some tacos on this trip. So I went ahead and I marinated some skirt steak. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. All right, we'll go set that in the, in the sled. Get this thing all wrapped up. It kind of feels like it's raining out here right now. Yeah starting to rain out here. I was really hoping that it would snow, not rain. That's all right. That's what we have to deal with. Making it to the trail now. You gotta be careful, this is a snowmobile trail as well, so. But usually you can hear them from a mile away, you know. At least, I hope so. <laughs> so at the moment I'm pulling the pole with just a uh, rope because I forgot my harness. And, uh, well I couldn't find my harness actually. So hopefully this will suffice for a, a good mile hike. I should figure out how to make this better. Okay. See if I can make this any better. I did bring a belt. So maybe I can loop it around there. See if that works. Ugh, hey, that works. That feels better at least. I feel like my pants are falling down. <laughs> that seems to be much better. Oh man, it's getting warm. Like I told you guys, it's already like 40 degrees. It's a little more than 40 degrees. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but uh, contending with a little bit of wet snow, so it makes it a little harder to kind of move, but whew, we're gonna get there. I heard a weird noise. Sound like some sort of sort of bird or something. Oh, I'm pretty sure it was a crow. Some of them crows have the craziest sounds. 
It's weird. You just never know. Um, when you're out here by yourself, you start hearing things and you're like, what was that? You start getting your, uh, your spidey senses going, you know? It's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. We know the bears are bedded down for the winter. You still got cougars and coyotes and wolves up in this area, so. I still got some predators to watch out for. There's a print right there. I can't tell if there's any claws in it though. If there's claws, it's usually a dog, so a coyote or something like that. If there's no claws, then it might be a kitty. Now I do have protection with me, as well as like my Garmin and this here whistle that someone actually sent to me just recently. Storm whistle. So I do have protection with me, as always. I've got bear spray. You always want to make sure you're prepared when you head out. Let somebody know where you're going. So like I always do, Shelby knows and the family knows. The likelihood of you running into anything is slim to none. As I walk and I see this pile of some sort of scat. <laughs> I don't think it's very fresh. It looks fresh, but it's been raining the last couple days. Made a nice, uh, Nice pile look fresh, I guess. <laughs> I'm going with that. It's really unlikely that you run into anything out here, you guys. So just get out and enjoy yourself. Be prepared though. And uh, have a good time. We're at the... Uh part where we turn I think our location is going to be just right up here all right here's the bridge and there's the water <laughs> We might go up here and see if I can uh, put a spot up over here. I like this spot. That's a pretty good spot right here. I like it. This might be a, a decent spot. Um, it's pretty well uh, staked out. And actually, it says right here, this is a dispersed camping spot in the Idaho Panhandle National Forest. Not sure what that is. <laughs> what is this? A tree stand? Maybe this is where people hang their, uh, hang their backpacks. Yeah, that's what they do. Oh boy, I'm sweaty, you guys. I gotta cool down. We'll uh, stamp out this area here and and make camp. I may I may even take it over there just so that I don't have the rain dropping on me the whole time I'm under the trees.
not easy to get up when you fall with snowshoes. <laughs> That's the truth. That is the truth. Well, I forgot my snow stakes at the truck, so I'm using what comes with the tent. Um, it's just these little aluminum poles. I'm just uh, burying them in the snow the best I can. I'm hoping that it'll freeze tonight and uh, they'll hold. Stuff like that happens, you know. Um, you could bury this sideways, and I'll probably do that when I guy it out. But for right now, I'm just sticking it in so I can, so I can get on to the next step. <laughs> That's pretty much it. It's currently 2.30. Um, I'm getting pretty soaked. We still got to get out there and get some wood before it gets dark, so I got to hurry up. All right, you guys, well, 
unfortunately, I left some stuff at the truck. So I gotta hike all the way out here and, and go get it. It's some camera equipment and I need it. I have to charge batteries, otherwise we can't have a video. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna leave you guys here as a time lapse and hopefully I will make my way back safe and sound before the sun goes down. I got my light with me, so it should be good. We'll see what happens. All right. I can't believe I, I forgot stuff. I thought for sure I had everything. Oh, it's gonna be another, I don't know, half an hour. Half an hour, 45 minutes, I think, of hiking. I don't know. It's currently 322. We'll uh, we'll start a start a walk right now and see how long it takes it takes us to get there and back. Oh, I mean, oh, okay. Let's take a look at this. It took me 18 minutes, and I went 0.91 of a mile, almost a mile. All right, oh, you guys, I needed. This, I needed this. <sighs> Phone charger. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> and I needed my cook kit. Look at that. Two things I forgot. Unbelievable. Oh, oh boy. All right. <sighs> Maybe I should eat something real quick. Oh, peanut butter chocolate bar on my way back. Drink some water. Oh. I'll just drink some water really quick. Oh. Oh. I got these, uh, these little quencher things. I'm sweating quite a bit, so... This is a uh, electrolyte sport gum. Quencher electrolyte sport gum. I'm gonna grab a couple of those. Eat one on my way back. All right. All right, let's see how fast we can get back. It's 23.43. All right, well, I'm back. I don't know if that's uh, like rabbit prints or something. <laughs> uh, okay, I need to get some wood chopped. We need to get dinner and my feet are killing me right now. That was a long hike, so it looks like 47 minutes. Looks like it took us 48 minutes. One point, so almost two miles. That's crazy. I need to cool down here. It's not often I do that, that I forget something. I use my iPhone for everything. Um, you guys see probably 90% of the video on the iPhone. And then when I talk, I use my GoPros and time-lapse for the GoPro, but I need that camera. I need the phone for pictures and all that. <laughs> A little behind the scenes for you guys. I'm not cutting this out. <laughs> Good and dead. We got one. We got one. Good 
this is another dead one. Right here. This uh, new saw I got is a silky saw. Silky gone boy, working great. Oh yeah, that's nice and dry. That's good. Good piece of wood. It looks fairly dry to me. I hope it is. I'm finally ready to start a fire, I hope. Oh boy, what an adventure this has been. Oh man, I am freezing. Um, hopefully this wood is dry enough. Uh, looks, looks quite wet, to be honest with you. I'll see, a uh, trusty uh, tumbleweed. He's always come through, but if uh, the wood isn't isn't good, then I don't think there'll be much of a fire. I'm just gonna do my best. I got some of the tiny branches that I broke off, so hopefully those will light up. I'm just gonna stuff it with stuff. <laughs> stuff it with stuff. This rain, I really was not, not expecting the rain, but here we are. Let's see if that'll do anything. Always have your carbon monoxide detector, you guys. Always. Whew. I gotta open the window. I'm trying to clean off some of the really, really wet stuff. I'm just trying to take my hatchet and kind of clean it off. I don't know if this is going to help or not, but everything is so wet that I'm having a hard time with this fire already. And then I'm setting it right on top of the wood stove in hopes that it'll dry it out with what fire I have going right now. It's not the best of the fire of fires, but 
hopefully it'll keep going dry that stuff out this has been rough guys <laughs> draw on that it's making it hard this one's I'm, I'm fighting for it you guys I'm fighting this time all right I've got somewhat of a fire going it's not the greatest but it's doing something um, it's cold, you guys. It's really cold. Uh, it's currently 32 degrees outside. And it's 40 degrees inside. Um, that's going up, but it's still really cold. Um, so for Celsius, friends, that's 0 degrees Celsius outside. And 5 degrees Celsius inside. Um, I had to change. I'm, I'm all wet. Uh, my feet are soaked trying to dry them off um, my jacket this thing does not seem to be repelling water much anymore so might be time for a new one of those <laughs> oh boy you guys we're having fun this uh this trip is turning out to be not what i expected that's for sure This seems to be helping a lot. Just knocking off the wet, getting it down to where it's dry, and then it takes off in the fire much better. At least that's how I'm thinking it's working. <laughs> a little big for this so we'll just kind of go sideways with it I guess cook over here mostly I've got that uh, skirt steak that we're gonna do oh man I'm excited for this now I'd much rather do this on a uh, grill but or over the fire but I'm definitely not gonna be uh, going outside so we'll have some street tacos I'll put the marinade up on the screen right here um, this is a really good marinade and it makes some delicious steak tacos since it is in the pan I might just cut it up now make it easier maybe it'll help it cook quicker I don't know All right, I got it all chopped up. This isn't how I wanted to cook it. You're definitely supposed to grill this. It makes it so much better when it has a char on it. Um, but it is what it is. And it's going to be tasty. I just know it, you guys. So currently, it's currently 7 o'clock. We're up to 68 degrees Fahrenheit on the inside, which is 20 degrees Celsius. Um, and we're sitting at 32 degrees. Now that is up top. Um, I'm sitting down here, you know, down below. But it still feels, it feels really good. It's starting to warm up. We're just about ready for dinner and we're nice and warm. Things are drying out. That's a positive. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be some good tacos. I am so hungry, you guys. All right, I think that's ready. We're going to take that off the heat. And I got to spice this fire up again. 
Let's get her going. These smaller pieces kind of burn quick. Maybe I can throw this guy in there. Maybe he'll go a little longer. The onion on there. Cilantro. Little bit of lime. I like some garden salsa on mine as well. Just a little bit. That tastes good right there. I don't know if it's really traditional or not, but I like cheese on mine too. So I like a little bit of cheese. All right, let's bless the meal. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this beautiful time. Lord, there's been so many mishaps and things that have gone wrong, but I just thank you for just taking care of it all. Lord, it's so easy to just have such a bad attitude, to just give up, to quit. But Lord, when we just know that you're with us and you'll help us through, it really gives me a different outlook, that's for sure. I thank you so much for this food. I pray you'll bless it to my body and that you'll help me to get good rest tonight, that I can get up and travel back safely tomorrow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh boy, it's getting hot, you guys. Whoa. <laughs> but boy, look at those. Don't that look good, you guys? I am so hungry, so hungry. This has been a crazy day, but here we are in a nice warm tent. We've got food in our belly. Mmm. Oh yeah. That is a good taco right there. One of the best probably right now. <laughs> Dinner was delicious. That was just what I needed. Man, I'm sitting here, well actually I'm laying here, stretching out and just relaxing um, after filling my belly with that uh, delicious meal. And I'm about to have some dessert. But before we talk about that, we'll just look at the temperatures. It's currently 753 and it is 75 degrees up top up here. Um, which is 24 degrees Celsius. It's toasty. Feels really good in here right now. So I've got a little bag of little treats. And these are from, I don't even know, Poland. These are Poland snacks. So me and the family are uh, subscribers to Universal Yums. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that. Um, this is not a sponsored post or anything like that. It's just, uh, we get these little boxes and it has candy in it um, from around the world. So every box is different. And so I have a soda here I wanted to try. Has anybody had this soda before? It looks tasty. I think it's an orange type of drink. Actually, I can look up in the little pamphlet you can look up everything about it. Like it talks about what it is. So it's an Oren Orn Zada Orangeade. <laughs> Orn Zada Orangeade? I'm not sure if that's how you say it. It says it's Poland's most beloved soda in white or red. Looks like we got the white one. Um, let's sip on some history. Orangeada, Orangeade, Orangeade, guess it's Orangeade. <laughs> Originally refers to a drink made from water, sugar, and orange juice. Popularized in Poland in the 18th century. In the 20th century, it became fizzy. That is interesting. That is interesting. Now the can looks like it's pretty beat up. It's kind of uh, popping everywhere. Hopefully this will not explode on me. Oh, 
Oh, we're good. I think we're good. Oh, all right. There we go. Orange Orangeade. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's carbonated and it's delicious. Wow. I would drink this at home. I don't know how I'd get more of it, but I would definitely drink it. <laughs> I'm going to have to set that over here and be sipping on that tonight. Okay, what do we got here? I got a couple of little bars, little chocolate bars. I'm not sure what this one is. It's uh, Batten Pierni Winyamaguya. <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I can't say that, okay? I just can't. Pierni Koi, Koya. Batten Pierre Nicoya. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I don't know if that's how you say it. Um, that one, it's chocolate marzipan gingerbread bar. I don't know if you can see that. That's interesting. Three layers of Polish decadence. Well, let's give it a try. <laughs> Sounds delicious. I like gingerbread. Now, I'm not going to eat all of this. I'm just trying it all tonight. Here we go. Oh, wow. Mmm. I like that. I'd probably eat that whole bar if I didn't have other stuff to try. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to say it. Who's had it? Comment down below if you guys have had any of this stuff. Maybe it'll say what it is on the pamphlet. Make it easier for me to read. Okay, dark chocolate marshmallow bar. That's what it's called. Dark chocolate marshmallow bar. Not even sure how you say it. It's one of their most famous, famous chocolate bars. So let's give it a try. See how it turns out. Looks tasty. Hmm. Marshmallowy, chocolatey, pretty tasty. <laughs> I'd eat that whole thing too. Oh, I've had a couple of these already. These are little toffee bars or toffee candies. I'm not sure what it's called. Milk chocolate caramels. A flavor worth celebrating. This thing is really good. I'm not even sure really what to uh, compare it to. Oh, oh, a little hard. It's cold. <laughs> it's a really good caramel. Really good. That is some good sweets right before bed. <laughs> oh, I really like this soda. That's right up my alley. Carbonated, orangey. Whatever else it said. I'm going to have to try to find the red one and try that one. Very delicious. <laughs> Time to set up our sleeping area. Get that all nice and cozy. This is one of my favorite uh, winter sleeping pads. Well, it's one that I have, so I haven't tried them all, but it works really well for me. It's nice and thick and it has a good R value. Now we have our zero degree bag. This is a Sierra Designs, it's called the Nitro. Nitro. It's uh, filled with down, and what you really need to do is you need to set up these sleeping bags and let them uh, fluff up because they compact nice and well, and that's great for 
for hiking. But since they get all crunched up, you gotta let them kinda open up and refluff. This one keeps you nice and warm. It's a it's a mummy bag. And then I went with a smaller pillow. Usually I have my Hess pillow, but I went with a small non-inflatable because I like to have a little of comfort and R value. Haven't used this pillow in a while. It's all about sleeping comfortably when you're in the woods, you know. <laughs> Bad night sleep can uh, can really change a lot of stuff. All right, you guys, I am laying in bed. I'm nice and cozy. I've got some warm socks on. <laughs> it feels so good. Oh yeah, nice and warm by the fire. Drying out my boots and my other socks too, just in case. You always gotta dry stuff out, you know. Um, take advantage of the of the fire. I got my pants hanging up there. I've got my other pants and I got my coat up top where it's nice and nice and warm so hopefully that all will be dry by tomorrow and uh, I'll be good to go so we'll just take one more look at the temp real quick it's 830 it says that it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit inside 35 degrees outside or 32 sorry for my Celsius friends, that's zero degrees Celsius outside and 24 degrees Celsius inside. It's cozy. It's really cozy. <laughs> I'm ready for bed though. I'm really, really, really ready for bed. It was a long day, crazy day. You just never know what's gonna happen in the woods, you know? Um, when you think you're prepared, you're, you're probably not. All right, everybody, I'll see all of you in the morning. Good night. Good morning. Oh man, it's cold, guys. It's cold, and I don't want to get out of bed. It's already eight, almost eight thirty. But that fire ain't gonna start itself. How about, uh, how about you guys start the fire? and uh, make some coffee, and I'll just lay here. 
That'd be great. You okay with that? So I'll just lay, I'll just wait right here for you guys to make some coffee and and get this tent warmed up. All right. <laughs> uh, I'll see you in a, see you in a bit then. No, oh, that ain't gonna happen. I gotta get up and start that fire. Oh. <laughs> I've got some some logs left, but not much. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. That'll take off. All right, I got the fire going. It was a little hard starting, but hopefully we can boil some water for some coffee and oatmeal. <laughs> I'm hungry, you guys. So current time, almost nine o'clock. Um, it's saying it's 34 degrees out and it's 43 degrees inside here. One degree Celsius outside and six degrees Celsius inside. Well, I better put this on top. This helps it boil quicker for sure. Right on top of there. Fire is going pretty good now. Oh boy, so I did not sleep good last night at all. I woke up every hour, I think it was. Um, I heard some things. There was like a bugle call. I think it was elk or something. Um, it startled me. And then there was this really weird feeling like, like an earthquake. I don't know. I was like, is my is the snow shifting or something? <laughs> it was really weird. Typically when I dream is when I like wake up and then try to go back to sleep. And I had this dream that these people were coming to rescue me. And I like open up the tent side here and I'm like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, you weren't eaten by a wolf. <laughs> and uh, I guess like somehow I triggered my, uh, my garment or something and didn't respond. I don't know, it was, it was a really random dream. Um, and then they were just hiking around and it was dark. It was like, it was still dark out. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can have some weird dreams when you're out here camping. I've got blueberry muffin oatmeal. This stuff's good. Rain's coming down pretty good now. I was hoping not to have rain today. That's okay. We'll get out of here in one piece. We won't be dry though. <laughs> oh, got a good enough boil for me.
All right, for coffee, we're just going Folgers Classic Roast. It's a coffee bag, similar to a tea bag. Yeah, just dump it in there. Pull that off the fire. I'll just let that sit there and get nice and coffee. Coffeeized. <laughs> Color develops before fully brewed. All right, duly noted. All right, I'm out of here. I've got a hike ahead of me. Get home to the family. <laughs> hey, if you've made it this far, please hit that like button. It lets me know that this is what you want to see, as well as it tells YouTube this is something you enjoy and want to see more of. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, God bless, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Okay, let's continue on. Oh, oh, speed limit 45. I think I can, uh, I think I can manage that. I wish I could go 45 miles an hour. I'm gonna have to get one of them little motor machines.